All right, y'all, excuse my crazy bun situation going on. I need to wash my hair so bad. <laughs> but I wanted to do a quick intro for this video because I thought it would be fun to show you guys how I actually make my notebooks at home, how I hand make them. I have made notebooks for a decent length of time, about a year now with a Live Love Inspired notebook that I came out with last summer. Um, which did fairly well and I wanted to share with you guys that process So if you are kind of maybe in a situation where you don't necessarily feel like you're ready to Commit to working with a vendor or a manufacturer like overseas or whether in the United States Whatever the case is this is going to teach you how to make them here at home And one thing that's really cool about it is I'm actually gonna be showing you a workbook that I am printing and putting together for some new Coaching clients that I'm gonna be working with so I have an actual physical workbook that I will be mailing out to all of my business coaching one-on-one -on -one clients, which I'm so excited about. And I figured it would just be a lot better for me right now since I'm just getting started with it to just kind of print them off here in-house. I know how to do it, it's easy, and I can just kind of do it on demand when I want. And I thought, well, it would be really fun to show you guys how I do that process because it's exactly the same process I did for my notebooks. Like to a T, I'm doing the exact same thing. And I'll be able to show you guys all of the supplies and everything that you need to get started. So first I'm gonna show you what I use and then we'll get a little more in depth after that. So let's get into the video. Just printed out a version of the notebook I just got some new paper y'all it is this 28 I think it's 20 yeah 28 pound paper it's really really nice it's just I love the thickness of it it's perfect so anyway um, that's what I just printed it out on on my laser printer and I basically always do stuff in gray scale that's kind of like my thing with my business this is what the workbook looks like it's not super big I think this only ended up being like 60 something pages and that's front and back so it's pretty decently sized I do need to print the cover off so I'm gonna do that and I'll show you guys but I just wanted to show you just what this looks like just straight out of the printer and then we will get all of the binding and stuff set up it's just literally a regular eight and a half by eleven so it shouldn't be too bad to set up and then the binding that I use I'll show you guys that really quick um, again Amazon can be your best friend when it comes to your business so I just order these packs of coils the actual vendor from Amazon I believe it's just mybinding.com um, I'll make sure I link the stuff down below that I'm talking about you can get all kind of colors I really like gold I also have some silver ones around here somewhere but yeah here we go and this is the wire o binding and I have the two to one ratio um, because I picked that it basically a two to one ratio I think it's a, the amount of space between these little coils here and for the cinch the one that I have in particular that's the ratio for that so I kind of wanted to make sure that what I purchased matched up with this machine because obviously if the coils don't match up then it's just not gonna be too good and you're gonna be really upset that you wasted money on whatever <laughs> it is so make sure you research that a little bit but two to one if you get this one that I have it's this black and white one right here I like it these are pretty decent I think I could definitely find some that are a little bit sturdier but since it's handmade and it's at home this really works well and with this particular situation with this workbook I think that it'll work really nicely so I am going to probably multitask and do a couple things for the box but then I will show you guys how to um, actually coil this I'm gonna print the other one off I'm actually doing two I got two new clients I'm so thankful to God. Um, I'm so excited to be working with these women to help them start their businesses. This is just so cool. Like, I just can't believe it. So I'm going to print that off, print the cover off, and then I'll show you where I'm at and kind of lay everything out. And we can figure out how the heck to bind this eight and a half by 11 size. My Live Love Inspired notebook is a nine by six. So it's definitely smaller. I have all of this setting set up for that one, but this should to me be easier so we'll see and I'll show you guys how I test it out to make sure like where the holes go and everything. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys the paper cutter that I use. I've had this paper cutter for I think the last almost three years now. 
one thing i will say about this thing or if you get something similar to this is really be careful um, i had a pretty bad injury on my thumb this thumb in particular i actually cut off like quite a big chunk of this top right corner of my thumbnail which went into my skin it took about a year to completely heal honestly like it was really really bad like this thing will take something off in a minute so if you do get something like this be careful it's definitely not super safe for kids so what i've done is i have mine pushed all the way up against the wall in the back the blade is down this thing is completely off so like just some tips for if you do do it to kind of keep it child proof and then there's even more you can do like there's a little thing that goes in front of this to um, make it even safer but right now she's still kind of small so she can't really get into it yet but i'll definitely probably put that extra piece on um probably soon as well so i just want to throw a disclaimer out there because i never want anybody to go run and get anything because i suggested it and then get injured and be like well tatiana said so just throwing it out there but besides that i love this thing it cuts up to about 500 pieces of paper depending on what the thickness of the paper is typically if it's like a um standard like 20 pound computer paper you could probably do 500 if it's something a little bit thicker like i was mentioning the 28 pound or 30 pound or some cardstock um you won't be able to get as much on but you can get quite a bit so i'm gonna change the camera around so you guys can see but this is the result of the books that i printed out i have two of them right here basically i wanted to have no white space on these sides and this is how it printed off for me so i'm going to just cut the white space off and i'm going to keep all of the workbook pages in here so if you're doing something similar with the journal you'll want to make sure you have your margins and stuff set up um different things you can do you want to make sure you count for the binding so so this is a good example of what i mean if you guys can tell so over here on this page this is the inside this is the outside so the inside margin is a little thicker because i'm going to be binding it and then the outside margin is going to be a little bit thinner because it's the side that's not getting anything on it so you want to kind of factor that into your design when you're doing it so yeah i did mine in indesign but you can do it in canva i've seen a lot of people do journal designs in canva um, a lot of different things i just really am a adobe sweet girl personally so i do all my stuff within the adobe suite and when i do my notebooks same thing my notebook is in indesign as well it's really hard to tell you guys exact margins for that stuff because it's all going to be different depending on the size but again i would just factor in the side that's going to have the binding on it you want it to be a little bit more space so that you don't cut off your printed part and then the part that's going to be on the outside can be more normal what i'm gonna have to get her to do something because i can't be using this while she's right here but um, I'll be back with you guys in a sec. Okay, so we finished the cutting. For the most part, this process works pretty well with anything like if you're this is something you're going to be doing regularly i would highly suggest once you figure out the appropriate places to cut the best thing to do is definitely mark it on your thing i'll show you guys the little marks i have okay so this is if you guys can see on here i've already put it back um where it goes but i have all these little marks on here and i have a little one the two is kind of marked out i probably need to make these a little bit clearer for myself three four right there for those numbers, that's what I use for my A5 inserts. So I use this to cut a lot of different things, my journals, my A5 planner inserts, these workbooks, all of those different things. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with a paper cutter like this. I'm thinking about investing in a new one that will actually be like, a. they have them like, they're called like laser cutters or something. I have to look into it and see exactly what it is, how it works. But I'm thinking about getting that instead because I wanted to replace the blade on this one, but I'm like, you know what, maybe I'll look into something a little bit more upgraded so i'm gonna look into that i'll definitely keep you guys posted if i do that and when i do it these are all cut down now i cut off all of the whites on the sides and so the next step is to laminate so typically i would laminate the front and back cover but i'm actually this is the only two laminating sheets i have left so luckily this is just for my workbooks and i'm going to just make sure that the front cover of these are laminated so just really simple depending on your notebook you'll probably want well you will want to laminate both i would suggest getting the five millimeter 
lamination sheets if you can. I think these are three millimeter that I'm using today, but um, five millimeter is good. It's just that extra thickness to help you to make sure the stuff is really sturdy. And this is the laminator that I use, you guys. I also do yeah, have, yeah. Um, ma'am, can you sit down? Sit down. I want you to fall. Can you have a seat, please? I got this machine from Walmart and it's like 20 or $25 or something and it serves me very well. You can get the laminating sheets in bulk off of Amazon. I highly suggest getting them off of Amazon because they're just a lot cheaper and you can get a lot more for your money versus getting them off of, um, or just like out of the regular store. It's just typically, and I've noticed that with a lot of stuff that it's just sometimes better to get it on Amazon. It's just a lot more affordable. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and push these through. So I'm gonna do this and then this shows you. So there's two different settings on here. You got three millimeter, five millimeter, I'm going to just use three because, like I said, these are just the three. But you would select Hello. that setting and then we will run these through. So we're making our progress. But you guys see, there's there's a lot of work that goes into it. So you have to justify if you feel like it's worth doing it by hand or if you would rather get it done. And I don't fault you either way. There's the pros and cons to doing both. The pros. <laughs> the pros to. Doing it yourself, obviously, is that you kind of cut out that middleman so you get that extra income, you can pocket it. But on the flip side, if you do it yourself, but if you do it yourself, then you have all of that labor to do yourself. That's where you have to just kind of weigh it out, like what makes more sense. And of course, you have to initially invest in all of the equipment to begin with. So, you know, like the good printer. I can show you guys the printer that I use too. I use this Canon laser printer. Um, I have a Canon inkjet printer and I use both of those together to make it happen because my laser printer doesn't always have the best color print quality, but it does amazing with grayscale and like black and white, all that stuff. Perfect. So I always do my inside pages with the laser printer. Um, toner lasts forever. It feels like it does anyway. So I highly suggest laser printers if you're going to be doing some like on demand, um, kind of like bulk printing highly suggest that but then if you want to get like the really nice print quality for the covers or like I'll insert a picture of my live love inspired note which is a full color cover then that I print on the inkjet so that's why I have two different ones and so I like to run these through two times just to make sure that it is completely sealed and it doesn't usually do any harm to it or anything it's just my way of making sure that it is good to go All right, so it's a completely different day now. I don't even know the last thing I showed you guys, but I do have the stuff still sitting here from our last clip. And I want to show you guys, oh look, I got this new hat from um, Michael's the other day. It's the Go Wild brand. They have a whole little end cap in there. I went in there to look for that This Is Us release so that I could support some of my fellow ladies. Um, but they didn't have it on my, my Michael, so I'm gonna go back in a few days. But anyway, I ended up getting this little hat and I just think it's so cute. It says, no fake friends. I've been wanting to get some hats here because the sun in New Mexico, y'all, is no joke. Uh, it will burn your whole body off if you're not careful. So yeah, I needed to do that. But basically, let's get back on task. So I went ahead and these are laminated. Both of them are good to go. And then I decided to not laminate the back covers. I don't know if I'm gonna regret that or not, but for right now, that's the choice that I've made. But this is the back cover. I just got the logo on there. So all of this excess on the side, I'm gonna cut it down. One suggestion I'm gonna give you guys too. So I know I mentioned already about the size of the pages. That's gonna be completely custom depending on what you're coming up with. When you're doing the cover with this style of DIY notebook, you could have a couple of options. So you can either make it the same size as the pages, which is what I did for this. I kind of wanted it to be more of like a close knit thing like this. Another option is you could leave some of the, um, what is this called? What is this called, y'all? This laminating paper. You could leave some of this on the side if you want to have more room and if you want the cover to be larger than the pages, which is nice because it'll protect it. I'm sure a lot of the planners and journals you have are like this. 
I can show you guys an example. Let me see if I can find one. So like this day designer, for example, this is a different style, of course, but you'll kind of see what I'm saying. Like the pages are just a smidge smaller, what's the best way to show this? Smaller than the actual cover. And so, I mean, in this case, it looks like they probably did like a 0.25 difference. So if you're designing it and you're like, okay, I do want my cover to be a little bit bigger. Um, on the sides, it looked like they went with a 0.5 difference. So you can see pages are down here and then there's the cover. So kind of think about that while you're designing before you print everything and all of that, because that's the time to make those decisions of how big you want stuff to be. So you can either go with it being close, like here's one of my Live Love Inspired Notebooks. And this one I ended up doing kind of like a 0.25 all the way around. And then of course over here, everything is kind of flush together. So this side's a little bit different, but it just really depends on your preference, how you want it to look. But I just wanted to throw that out there. So for this one, everything is flush together. I'm not doing anything larger than the other. So I'm gonna cut them down and I'll show you guys what I use for that process. I just used this little simple paper cutter. And you can, I probably will leave just a little bit of room on the sides, but you don't have to. Um, when you do this stuff at home with this laminating at home, that's why I run it through two times to make sure it's really secured on there. So again, another preference. And as you play around with this stuff, you'll really get a feel for what works best for you and what just doesn't. I don't know how long this video is at this point, but I like to be thorough. If I'm gonna give you guys a tutorial, I wanna make sure I cover all bases. And so basically with this, this is the cinch, it is from We Are Memory Keepers. This is the Heidi Swap one, but they have ones that are not Heidi Swap, like it's just the regular We Are Memory Keepers. And they have different ones. They have some where you can do circle holes. This one is the square hole one. So um, this is the finish that you'll get. On there you get the squares, like that. And most of the things I have are square. Like this is some of my notebooks I get manufactured, they're square. So I kind of just stuck with that theme, but they do have one that is circular. If you prefer that look, that would be up to you. And again, I mentioned to you guys, this is the two to one ratio as well. That's important to note with any binding machine you get because it's gonna help you to know what size coils to get. And there's a couple of functions that happen with this thing. So basically what I like to do usually is I'll make a test page. So let's do that. I like to grab a test page because I did end up cutting these pages down from the normal size of what they would be. And I'm gonna just cut one down. And this is what I suggest you use. Same with, if your cover is a different size, make a test cover page and make a test inner page or whatever you wanna call it. Um, let me just cut these down really fast. So basically, here we go, we got the machine. These little pegs are the actual holes. If for some reason you don't want a hole to happen, you take it out. So this is actually the setting that I usually use for my Live Love Inspire notebook. I'll end up pulling out six and seven when I go around and do the second set of punching. So I'll show you guys what I mean. Um, let me look this up first. Push them in and that means it punches, pull them out and it won't. So it'll miss that hole if you pull it out. And this is the little page. So they have this little measuring thing on here, which I use somewhat, but not in the way you may think. I just kind of use it to hold the paper so I know where to start. And this is, this is what I end up doing because it's just too much to figure out. So I usually just leave it like this. <laughs> and then I do the first punch. So let's do that. And I like to do it this way because I know that this is gonna be correct. The bottom is gonna be just enough distance and all of that then I can flip it also this punches up to 20 pieces of paper depending on the thickness that's going to vary it just really depends on how like if you're doing cardstock you know you definitely can't do 20 pieces you might be able to get like eight or something and then I'm going to pull this out and then this little thing over here there's this little white peg or might be a different color on the machine you get but this little white piece this you push it down and it holds the paper in place uh, while you're punching and you can lift it up. So I'll show you guys what I'm saying here. So I'm gonna put this in 
And I think I'm going to do it on maybe like the second or the third. Basically, like I'm counting these. So one, two, three, the third one down, I'm going to put it on there. And this is where the mess ups tend to happen because it's like I don't know where to do it. So I'm going to show you guys the best way I can and explain this within my logic. <laughs> Hopefully it makes sense. <laughs> If not, there's plenty of tutorials on how to use this machine that are probably way better than this one. I think I watched like two and then I was like, I'm just gonna figure it out. But okay, so over here, as you guys can see, here's the paper and here's the punches. So I like to be careful and make sure that I'm not accidentally punching the edge of the paper. So I will actually undo the ones over there that I think might hit the edge just to be safe. And then I'm gonna go ahead and punch it and let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Perfect. I could almost go up one more. I just feel like if I do, it may be an issue, but let me just try it and see. I'm going to put this back on there. I'm going to close down nine now or push in nine and then let's see what nine does. And then this will be my first test. Okay. So see how, oh y'all, y'all. Okay. Another thing you can do too with the test pages is if you need to just cut off the side if you need to redo something let's just redo it let's just redo it and i'm doing this with you guys for the first time with this size page so you can see how this process works so we're gonna do the first punch then we're gonna go down to hole number three i don't know why that's the one i'm just going with um actually maybe i'll go with hole number two let's try it that way this time okay i'm gonna just punch it all and see. I feel like this is a little close though. Uh, let's see. No, I'm not going to go with that one. Well, let's just see so you guys can see. I'm sorry. I know you're probably like, what is she doing? So here we go. See how now it's like so close to here. So then you would have to adjust down here. And so this is where it starts getting kind of like, what? And this is maybe where I'm not using the machine completely the right way. All right. So I had to do some I had to do some playing around for a second, but basically this is what I decided on y'all. Like, look how small my paper is getting now. But it really helps. It's like, this is one of my hacks. It's like, I'm not gonna keep getting a new piece of paper, just cut it down, because all you need to know is the length. So what I decided to do is just, for the first punch, I'm literally just moving the paper up like three of these little marks here on the roller and it's hard to show. Um, let's see if I can get a little closer. I don't know if that's gonna help at all. But yeah, three, three of these marks here, I'm just gonna move it up. Not even where I wrote here, but just like one, two, three. So I'm doing that on the third one. And punching. closing on my hand okay so there's that and then I'm going to count to the second one here put it on that little peg and then punch again and I'm not lifting up anything because the way the spacing is and this is where it just gets like you gotta just kind of play around with it unless you are like an expert with this machine and you can just do it with the measurements I'm not so it takes me a little bit longer but it does end up working out so here's the not this side but here's the final and so now we can get into actually punching the sheets because now I know what I'm doing. So, move this back up here. And I mentioned, this is a thicker paper. I think this is like 28 pound paper, I believe. So I don't even know how much could fit in here. Let's go with, I'm just gonna grab a handful and see. Um, I might, I'm just gonna go for it, let's see. So, push down. oh, we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna do all of those first. have reached the last part of this whole thing which is the binding part so I just got done punching all of my holes and stuff so you guys can well I've sped it up but basically once you figure out where the stuff is going like you test it out 
then the rest of the process becomes pretty seamless and then as you make more like if you're going to be selling these for example as you make more you'll already know your settings on the cinch so you won't have to worry about it or whichever binding machine you use and again i know they're all different so this may not be helpful for with another one i'm not sure but anyway now i'm going to bind it so oh i forgot to do the covers let me do those really quick okay we're all set now and sometimes when i do the covers <laughs> I noticed that it'll kind of hang on to the, um, what is it called? The thermal, not thermal, what is this thing? Laminating material. So you can just cut it off or spiral it off. I just go like this to get those off. And usually it doesn't look too bad. All right, so now what I'm gonna show you guys is how to bind it with this machine. Like you literally can do three different things with this. So we punched now i'm going to bind it so you put the you put it together just like this you know, make sure everything lines up cross your fingers everything lines up because if it doesn't then you would have to like reprint something and start over this has happened to me before and that's why i can feel that um i can feel that from that those times that's happened but anyway you can see it you can see through so we know it's all lined up and then i have my back cover on there okay so what you'll do is you will literally take the front or the back cover and you're going to put it almost like you're flipping it towards the front you're going to flip it on like that so now if just to show you guys if i was to open this up it would be like back cover i just literally flipped the back cover over so now we're on another part of this machine we're on this side with these little like things sticking out and i'm just going to put my binding wire right on there like that and this is a wire O, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. So I'm just gonna place this directly on here. And I always forget which side, but I think this is the right, the right side. And remember, you want that back cover on top. Yeah, and so when you put this on, the reason you want the back cover on top is because when you close everything down, you want these things of the wire to be in the back of the notebook, because it's just, that's just the way it is. <laughs> so. Um, that's basically my explanation for that. And also you will need a pair of wire cutters. Nine times out of 10, you'll probably end up cutting off some of the excess. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna pull this off now and we have it ready to go. And now there's a third part of the machine, which is probably my favorite part, is you flip it to this side. And now you have this part over here where you can actually adjust this first of all, and you will know how big your binding coil is. Um, I actually think the setting I have it on should work. We'll see. Fingers crossed. If not, you can always re you can always pull the wire off and redo it. But you want to make sure that how these are, like how I'm able to put my hand up against this, this is exactly how you want it to be flush, flat to the part here. And another little tip that I've learned too is when you're doing this, make sure that the edge of this is not crimping down on like one of these unless it's completely on it so like for example this one right here i don't know if you guys can see it. i'll try to zoom in in the editing but this one right here is really close to this so you want to just move it over a bit to make sure that it doesn't smash it down because then it'll make it crooked and it will not look good so i'm gonna go ahead and clamp this one down between five eighths and three fourths there's these little measurements on here and i'm just gonna cramp it down y'all clamp it clamp it and let's see how that did. And I actually think I might need it to be smaller. So let me go a little smaller. Okay, so let's try that again. Because I want to make sure it's tight. Perfect. Okay, then we're going to do the other side now. Okay, perfect. So I did it all the way around. And then this is where the wire cutter comes in. Let me just do this side one more time. Make sure that we're getting all clamped together. Okay, great. So this is what it looks like closed. And I'm sure you guys know that from like just normal notebooks. And then I literally just cut off the excess. There's just this little piece hanging that's not on anything and I'm just gonna snip it off. And that is it. So now we flip it back over and we have our little binded workbook, y'all. Like, look at, look, look at this. It's cute, right? All right, so I feel like this was a really long video, but I hope that this tutorial was very in-depth and it helped you.
I hope this tutorial was very in-depth and it helped you with getting your binding together. And so, like I mentioned, again, this is this was like a rough draft version of my Live Love Inspire notebook. I've since really got it down, but this is was the very first notebook that I made and it was all, the binding was off, you know, stuff like that. I'll try to insert a picture of what it looks like now. You, The more you do it, you'll get more comfortable. Give yourself the time to play around with it. Um, I always just say, and I think I may or may not have mentioned this at the beginning of this video, but it's up to you how you want to do things. There are tons of manufacturers out there that can do this process for you. You know, like not everybody wants to sit down and do this, you know, because if someone places an order, okay, well now you have to create it. So things to keep in mind. This is my laser printer, by the way, you guys. Just want to make sure I'm covering everything. I will, here, that's the model. It's the Canon Image Class. MF632CDW. It has toner, which these little things. The toner lasts a really long time. And so this is why I suggest a laser printer if you're planning on doing like grayscale, black and white printing. I mean, really even color as well. It just prints a lot at a time and it's not like you're running out like with inkjet. If you were to print, if I was to print this on my inkjet printer, I might've been able to get like three of these done and then my ink would be gone. Whereas with the toner, I could probably print like 10 of these and still probably have some left. So it just really depends. But these turned out really cute. I'm so excited to send these to my clients. I know they may or may not watch the video, but so excited to work with you guys. But yeah, you guys, that is basically how you make your own notebooks. I just wanted to share this process with you because I know for many of us, like how I've been for the last couple years, you wanna cut the middleman out and just try to do some stuff yourself. A lot of you are DIYers like I am, and I'm always a person of trying to figure out something, how to do it on my own to save money. I'm actually moving out of the handmade notebook a little bit and actually gonna probably work with some manufacturers. I'm moving into that, which I can always show you guys with that process in a future video as I get more into some of the stuff that I'm coming out with, which I'm so excited about what I'm working on. I have another video coming soon. I just wanna give some updates about my shop and kind of what's gonna be happening with it. There's some changes, some pauses, and different things that I'll be sharing soon, but Anyway, let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions about anything that I covered in this video. I know I kind of was all over the place um, with it and I've been filming this over the last, I don't know how many days, so it's sometimes it's hard to remember what I talked about and what I didn't. But all in all, the whole point of this was just to empower you with the knowledge that you can do this yourself if you want to. It's a really easy process and there's even more types of binding and um, cover options like you can make your own hardcover stuff as well and put like those little corners on the ends I've never done that because I'm not the best with that glue and stuff but there's lots of other things you can do besides just this one way I showed you so definitely take a look around on YouTube lots of videos to show that as well but anyway I'll see you guys next time if you haven't already subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and I'll see you next time bye